A to Z Mysteries, Book Number Twelve, The Lucky Lottery, by Rod and Roy. Chapter Five. You know who he is? Then cast. Just his first name. Dot com said, he was wearing a bowling shirt with Joe stitched over the pocket. Now we're getting somewhere, Josh said. I think the name of his team was printed on the back of his shirt. Dodd added, "I noticed it when he left, but he was too far away to read it." Josh pulled out his pencil and flipped over the piece of drawing paper Hector had given him. "I can sketch him if you tell me what he looked like," he said. "You can," Dodd asked. "Okay, let me see." His hair was dark and kind of floppy. He had a little mustache too, a skinny one, and he had a spice between his two front teeth. About how old was he? Ruth Rose asked as Josh sketched. Dot closed her eyes and snapped her bubble gum. I'd say about twenty-five or so, she said finally. Did he have any scars or tattoos or anything? Dink asked, watching the thief's face take shape on Josh's paper. Dot shook her head. Not that I can remember. Josh held up his drawing so Dot Calm could see it. Does that look like the guy? He asked. Yeah, pretty much, she said. But you drew his chin too square. He had kind of a pointy chin. Josh erased the man's chin, made a few more pencil marks, and then showed her the drawing again. "That's him," she said. "Boy, you could make a living as an artist." Josh blushed. "Thanks. That's what I want to do when I grow up." Ruth Rose looked at Dink and Josh. "We should take this to the police station and show it to Officer Fallon," she said. "Good idea," Dink said. The kids thanked Dot Calm and started to leave. Hey, I just thought of something," she called after them. Joe said he was thinking of moving to California if he ever got enough money. Thanks," Dink said. "We'll tell Officer Fallon." They hurried out of the supermarket. Snow was still falling. The wind blew it into their faces, and flakes caught on their eyelashes. Josh slipped his drawing inside his jacket to keep it dry. A few minutes later, they tapped on Officer Fallon's door inside the police station. "Come on in," he said. "How about a Christmas goodie?" He held out a paper plate of cookies. "We want to report a crime," Dink said, taking a cookie and sitting on one of the chairs in the office. Josh and Ruth Rose each took one, then sat next to Dink. Josh broke his cookie in half and gave a chunk to Pal. Officer Fallon leaned on his elbows. "I'm listening," he said. Dink told him about the lottery ticket stolen from Lucky's house. Officer Fallon let out a low whistle when Dink said seven million dollars. Ruth Rose continued telling Officer Fallon about visiting Lucky's grandfather, and Josh finished by telling about their talk with Dot Com. He slid his drawing out from under his jacket and showed it to Officer Fallon. She told us his name is Joe. He said, "Pretty good artwork, Josh." Officer Fallon said, studying the drawing. You know, this face looks familiar. Do you think we can find him before tomorrow? Dink asked. Officer Fallon raised one eyebrow. I can't chase him without knowing his last name. He said, "Why the rush?" Because tomorrow he can cash in Lucky's lottery ticket, Ruth Rose said. And the lottery lady said the guy is heading for California. Josh added. Officer Fallon stood up. I'll do my best. Josh, can I keep this sketch? Well, I was planning to finish drawing Ruth Rose, he said. I started a picture on the back. Officer Fallon flipped the paper over. He grinned at Ruth Rose. "Is that a bird on your head?" "It's a parakeet," Ruth Rose said. Then explained about Blue Boy. Dink told Officer Fallon about Zelda Zoot. Hector said she steals cookies. He added, 
We'll check her out," Officer Fallon said, heading for the copying machine. He placed Josh's drawing on the machine, made a copy, and handed the original back to Josh. "I'll circulate the sketch and see what turns up," he said. "What happens if you don't find the crook in time?" Dink asked. "Well, that's a problem," Officer Fallon said. "As far as I know, whoever presents a winning lottery ticket gets the money, no questions asked." Even if they stole it, Josh said, "That's not fair." I know it isn't fair," Officer Fallon said, "but the lottery people have to award the money to the ticket holder." Officer Fallon thought for a minute. "I suppose if they had proof that the ticket was stolen, they would hold back the money." He looked at the kids, "But you have no real proof. Your friend can't prove his grandfather bought the tickets or sent them." Dink stood up. Then we'll get proof," he said. Chapter six. The kids thanked Officer Fallon and left. "Let's go to my house and talk," Dink said as they stepped outside into the falling snow. "Talk, Shemalk," Josh sputtered. "I've gotta eat lunch. That half a cookie made me hungry." Dink laughed. Okay, we'll eat while we figure out what to do next. By the time they reached Dink's front door, they looked like three kid-sized snowmen. They left their jackets, boots, hats, and mittens in the hall and headed for the kitchen. Hal trotted in and immediately flopped down next to the radiator. Dink found a note from his mom on the table. Dink. I had to take the car in for snow tires, heat up the soup in the microwave, and make peanut butter sandwiches. I'll be home soon. Love, Mom. I'll make the sandwiches, Josh said, pouring through the cupboard. Dink heated some tomato soup, and the kids carried their lunches into the den. Anyone want to watch a video? Dink asked. Video, Ruth Rose said suddenly. That's it. What's it? Josh asked. There was a video camera at the lottery counter. Ruth Rose said, "If Joe's bowling team is on the back of his shirt, maybe it'll show up on the tape." Good idea, Dink said. I'd better tell Officer Fallon. He picked up the phone and called the police station. After Dink told Officer Fallon about the video camera, he dialed information and asked for the phone number of the supermarket. Dink dialed again and asked to be transferred to Dot Column at the lottery counter. Dink asked Dot if the camera was turned on the day Hector bought the seven tickets. He listened, said thank you, and then hung up. She's gonna ask her boss to check the tape. Dink said, "If the name of Joe's bowling team shows up, Dot's boss will call Officer Fallon." I wonder if this Joe guy bowls at the fitness center. Josh said. Good thinking, Josh," Dink said. "We can check it out after we eat." What's this? Ruth Rose suddenly cried. Something had fallen out of her hair and landed in her soup. Josh giggled. Maybe it's a cootie. No, Joshua, it's not a cootie," Ruth Rose said. She lifted something shiny onto her soup spoon. It's another tin foil bow tie. Josh dug the other bow tie out of his pocket, except that one was wet from tomato soup. The two tin foil bow ties were the same. Ruth Rose looked at Dink and Josh. "How did that thing get in my hair?" she asked. The kids stared at each other. "Blue boy!" they shouted at the same time. "He must have had it in his beak when he landed on your head," Dink said. "He buried it in your hair." Yeah, but where did he get it? Josh asked. The bow tie had to be in the atrium. Dink said, "Those parakeets never go outside." Then the crook must have been in the atrium too. Ruth Rosa said, "Maybe it is a Zelda zoot." It could still be Joe. Josh said, "He might have gotten to the atrium to ask someone where Hector's grandkids live." Just then, Dink's mother burst into the house. The roads are awful, and it's still snowing. She said. She slipped off her coat, scarf, and boots. 
This will be a good night to curdle up with a big bowl of popcorn. That's what we do after skiing, Ruth Rosa said. You know how to ski? Josh asked. Sure, my family learned to cross-country ski a couple years ago, Ruth Rosa said. Hey, why don't I teach you guys? We can get around town a lot easier that way. That's a nice idea, Dink's mother said. Just keep out of the streets. The snow plows are out in full force. The kids cleaned up their lunch things, got into their jackets, and walked next door to Ruth Rose's house. She took three sets of cross-country skis and poles from the garage. Then she showed Dink and Josh how to strap them onto their boots. Okay, now just glide, she said. Slide your skis along the snow and use the poles to keep your balance. Piece of cake, Josh said, taking a step. He fell into a snowbank.